Isaiah chapter 45, the epistle of the Romans, the 45th book of the Bible. Continuing from verse 28 of 44, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Now this is the 150 years before this guy's even born. And we've got more to say. Whose right hand I have holden. Now the right hand is strength. Usually most people are right handed. Not anything against the left hand, but you know, there's strength. And God is holding it. Remember Moses when Joshua was fighting? Uh, I forget which two men were there, but they were holding up Moses' hands. Then they took a rock and put it under Moses' hands, so Israel being victory. Well, here God is holding this man's hand. I will loose the loins of kings. Cyrus is going to win battles. And I will loose the loins of the kings to open before him the two leaved gates. Now, leaved gates would be, here's a gate of a city, and it's not one big door, but it's two doors split right down the middle. And the gates shall not be shut. God speaks, of, I don't know if we're going to finish this chapter tonight. God speaks of this man, Cyrus. As he speaks, I don't know what the I don't know what the the thing is here, but it's just interesting that the uh, Church of Philadelphia has an open door that no man can shut that God opened. Cyrus' door is open to first the temple for Ezra. Second, it's an opening for Nehemiah to build the city walls. The Philadelphia Church Age door that is open is the Bible. The 1611 King James Authorized Version. Now that might be a little interesting study there. I will go before thee, Cyrus, and make the crooked places straight. Well, that is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ spoken about with John the Baptist. He shall make the way straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. That's the door. Locks. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. That is the, the mechanism of the doors to lock them. The cities back then were all walled and they had these massive gates, doors. And when you read through Nehemiah, it speaks about when they got this gate, they, they set the gate up and they, they fixed the locks. And the, you are reading Nehemiah and Nehemiah explains to us what's going on here. This guy is going to enter into cities and God is going to open up the door of the city. Listen, with Israel, Jericho, God just had to march around the city and, this, and shout. And the walls came down with the, the doors and everything. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. I don't know what the darkness is. Treasures have been hidden in the dark. Hidden, hidden riches of secret places that no one knows. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, even before you are born. Let's stop it off. We're talking about a Gentile here. Dead dog, meanie, ugly. Don't want to go see them, Jonah and Peter, and the God of Israel. So all this is happening so Cyrus will know God. There's a possibility what we read through so far that maybe Cyrus is in heaven. Will be in glory. He says, I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, and the God of Israel. 
But it says before that, that thou mayest know. That's a personal application. Not just know that he's the Lord and he's the God of Israel, that thou mayest. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have even called, there's the elect, but that's corporate, that's not individual. Sorry, Mr. Calvin. That's a nation. That's a group of people. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. And he's talking about Israel. Did you just read what God just said? Did you just see what Jesus said? Jesus walks in there and here's this woman of all the, the, the famine in the land and God only took care of one Gentile woman. Here of all the people that have leprosy, God only healed one Gentile of leprosy. Of all the people in the time, only Cyrus is going to know me. He says that thou mayest know that I am the Lord. And he says in verse 4, I have certain name thee, though thou, Israel, Jacob, has not known me. This, this Gentile is going to know me and you don't know me. I am the Lord. There and there is none else. There is no God. Have you seen the, the coalition? Have you seen this repeated over and over and over and over? I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. God made you. There's no other God, Israel. Oh boy, but there are plenty of gods in, in Jerusalem. There are plenty of gods in, in Israel that are gone. They had the golden calves. They had their own priest class of people who they hired. Who they put advertisements in, in a, a pornographic magazine to get more men into the ministry. Yes. Exactly what they did. God keeps telling them over and over in, in these chapters, I am the only one. And if you were walking Jerusalem today, you would see America. On every street corner, there would be a, a building or something erected for, and I use that word properly, erected for a God. And it says it in the Bible. Every street corner. Probably had, they probably had the names of roads named for famous sinners. We, when we get to Jeremiah, it, we're going to see in great detail of their sins. Even the movie house is smoking inside of them. We'll see in Jeremiah. That they may know from the rising of the sun. That rising sun is interesting. And again, here is something, a fact that I don't know how to put together with this. Japan is called the land of the rising sun. England is said that the sun never set on the British Empire. All over the world there was the English Empire everywhere. They were sending missionaries out. They were sending ships out all over the place. That they may know from the rising of the sun. That would be on the east. Sun rises in the east. And from the west. That's where the sun goes down. That there is none beside me. Well, wait a minute. If you were to start in Jerusalem today and go east, go all the way around the world back to Jerusalem, you're not going to find that God's the only God. Especially if you look at the yellow pages in America. But there's coming a day from east as far as west, this entire planet will know that God is God. And all gods, all uh, idols that we, we learned last night, all images will be destroyed and all wicked will be placed into the lake of fire, into hell. That's the millennium. That's eternity. I formed the light, Genesis 1. And that's even before the sun. That's, that's, that's the first. God said, let there be light. And create darkness. 
and he had a firmament and divided the light from the, from the dark. I make peace. You can't have peace without God. Worldly peace is it's very temporal. Now the next three words I create evil. Uh, let, let's have a little let's have a little lesson here together. Okay, ready? Let's spell evil. E V I L. Now let's spell sin. S I N. They are not the same. It does not say sin. What is evil? And give you a short thing as short as I can do it. Evil here that God created is the consequence of sin. Let me give you some examples. Uh, one I always use. You cut off your arm. What's the evil? You gotta go through life without an arm. You smoke. Doctor tells you got lung cancer. That is an evil because of smoking. You drink too much. And your liver and your pancreas is messed up. What's the evil? The disease of the pancreas and the disease of the kidney. That is the evil. What was the evil of Adam and Eve? Pain, suffering, sorrow, curse, and their son being murdered. What was the evil of Peter? Man, he, he was in great tears and distraught and upset that he denied the Lord. What was the evil of the Lord Jesus Christ? What followed him because of sin? Nothing. Evil here is God has given into man because he disobeyed God and, and ate the fruit he wasn't supposed to, became a sinner, became a knowledge of good and evil. Notice that. You now know what the consequences of sin is. That's the evil that God created. What's the best definition? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That's the evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Not in every case. Not every case. But if a woman is pregnant and uses drugs and alcohol, what would be the evil? That child coming out with a deficiency, with a disease, with with uh, with addiction, disability, and you'll look at that child and say, "Oh, why did it happen to me? God, why'd you do this?" Uh, you did it. Evil happens to all of us. There are things right now in my old body as it's aging that is doing because it's something I didn't do growing up or something I did. Listen, you want to you want to enjoy life and drink and have a good time and keep your zipper down and all that. And then one day when you hear, "Hi, this is your kid. Give me some money." Ooh, that's the evil. You reap what you sow. Drop down, ye heaven. S from above. Let the skies pour down righteousness. I thought it was supposed to pour down rain or snow or sleep. Have you gone outside and had your righteous uh, umbrella out there? Did you put your righteous coat on? Have you heard the weatherman? There's a 50% chance of righteousness happening this afternoon. Let the earth open. The earth opens during Noah's time, and -hoo -hoo. The, the earth opened up and swallowed. Uh, I had his name right in my tongue and went away. Uh, don't, don't, uh, open up and he went right down into hell. 
Earth opens up all the time with earthquake. We're getting down here all, in a lot of places in Earth. We're getting these places called sinkholes. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. Wouldn't that be a great weather report? We're down here at the farmer's market. And we've got a family down here. And today is a great chance of many people getting saved. I don't see many getting saved. It's got to be future. And let righteousness spring up together. You read Noah's flood, the rain came down, the rain came up. We're going to have a flood in the future of not of water like Noah's time, but we're going to have a flood of righteousness. When Jesus Christ is here. I the Lord have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. That's, you're, you're fighting with God. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. You know, you're just a piece of broken pottery. And you get together and complain and gripe against God. They did that all through the wilderness journey. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou? Imagine, hey, here's a guy, he's got a lump of clay on, on, the, on the spindle there, whatever he calls it, and he's turning it and he's working in the clay. Hey! What are you doing? I don't want to be a bull. I want to be a Vegas. Shut up. You are what I'm going to make you. You have no word over it because I am the creator. I am the God. Listen, if I put you in charge, you'd be making that stupid idol that we learned last night that you're going to cook your, your, your bread over and you're going to use it to keep yourself warm and then you would be God. Now you just shut up and let me make you who you want to be. And there's many Christians out there, they've already got the idea that they know what God wants of them. Just shut up and let me make you. And it says, what makest thou or thy work? He has no hand. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begattest thou? Who do you think you forget? I mean. And it's detarded. It's. Or to the woman. Did you see some of that? What did Jesus keep calling his mother? Woman. Some people say, oh, that's just bad and all that. Um, Jesus fulfilled the scriptures. He said, woman. Woman. There it is right there. What hast thou brought forth? Come on, mom. Who do you think you gave birth to? I know. And it's rebellion against the, your parents. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, I made you. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons. Wait, ask me what's going to happen. And concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Come on, ask me what I got for you to do. I have made the earth. This is going back to Genesis 1, the first book of Moses. And created man upon him. Just in case you thought that you came from nothing and you came from monkeys. Just in case you would think. I don't know who ever think they came from monkeys. I mean, just and not think that God made you. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens. And all their holes have I commanded. Now, you think all their holes I've commanded, I've made the heavens. You think that's just a statement. They were worshiping the host to heaven. They were worshiping the constellation. You know, the twins, the, the Virgo, and the, the lion, and, and Orion's belt. And they were worshiping him. 
and they get their Jerusalem Daily News and open up the leaflet and roll and uh, let's see, I'm a 14th, 457 BC, and they would read their horoscopes, just like we do today. And I guarantee they had some kind of tarot card system. And they would have, they, they even got some, they even got where Jeremiah says something about, they would use uh, pillows to catch spirits or something. Ooh. And God is saying, what God is telling him, he's rebuking, he's saying, listen, those stars that you worship, I made them. And I command them to do what they do. Because each one has his own little circuit. And they were made for signs, for seasons, that sailors can look up and say, okay, uh-oh, there's Orion's belt, there's the Big Dipper, I'm supposed to be over there, I'm over here, I got a correct course and head for that constellation. And that's how shit, they weren't worshipping the, the, they were using them as a navigational aid, but Israel is using them as, what shall I do today? Oh, wow, if Libra, Libra is in this area here, I'm not to do anything with money because I'll lose it. And if this star is in this point here, I am not to get married or try to find any spouse or date anything like that because it would be a lose. They're doing what you find in your daily newspaper. And it's funny, you know what? You gotta be careful, you gotta be careful, you gotta be careful. Because where did they put those horoscopes? They put them where the kitties can read the comic strips, usually. Why don't they put them with the obituary section? Because they're dead. So, hosts, they're, they're worshiping him. I have raised him up in righteousness, I will direct all his ways. They're not, they're not listening to him today. He shall build my city. And he shall let go my cat. We went back to Cyrus. We took a little commercial break. Here we're here about Cyrus on the spot. Hi. We've got all these great gods that we worship. For $19.99, with $14 shipping in, you can have your own apostle snot rag. Slightly used to wipe my forehead of all the people I heal. With a cassette tape to follow for an extra $4. Call now. Our lines are open. And then we get back to Cyrus. God is rebuking him. I'm going to give you this man. He's going to bring back the, the tabernacle, the temple, which is still there. They're already mocking Isaiah. <laughs> you know they mock Jesus? Are you able to destroy this temple and build it in three days and, and, and when it took like 40 years to do whatever it was? If they mock Jesus, you know they mocked Isaiah. Marvel not, the world hates you. So what Isaiah does, he takes a commercial break to tell them, <clears throat> excuse me, why the temple is going to be destroyed. And then he comes back and says, it's going to come back. So Ezra and Nehemiah reading Isaiah would be like, wow, yes. So if they were, I don't know if they ever did, but they were to read Isaiah 45 and say, This is your sins, Israel. This is why we are in Babylon. Now as we build and set up the foundation of this city and the temple is built, we'll find out I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. Talk about the king. And he shall let go my cactus. All Israel, who let us go? Cyrus. Thank you. The captives here are in Babylon. My fellow brothers of Jews, we just lived out Isaiah 45. The prophecy of over 150 years 
before this child is born in even name, prophecy, and then preparing them for Jesus. There's 48 prophecies coming. And if this one was, was done in, in, in chapter 45 in Ezra and Nehemiah, you better be known that 48 prophecies of Jesus Christ are going to be fulfilled. And you're going to be excited about it. You're going to be so, you're going to be shouting, crucify him. Uh-oh, that's not what you're supposed to shout. What was it in the time of Nehemiah when they finally built that temple? There was laughing, there was joy, and there was crying. Joyful, here it is. It, we're here. It's built and crying. We remember what it looked like and all the sins that we were involved in. Wouldn't it be funny if, it, if those Jews, when they cried, crucified, were in happy and great, and here we are, and then when he comes back, they'll be in tears. Oh, man, look at our sins. Look how bad we were. And they go see the new temple cleaned out by the Lord Jesus Christ as he goes in there and starts throwing everybody out all over again. And I'm going to be right behind him. That temple's there, right? In, 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 in Jerusalem, right? We are going to watch Jesus enter into Jerusalem and step into that temple and wipe that whole place out even better than what's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because he's going to grab Satan by, by his hand and he's going to say, come here, i got some chains for you. You're under arrest. You do not have the right to speak. You're not going to make a phone call. You're going to jail for a thousand years and you ain't going to get paroled until the thousand years is up. Now, I got some cleaning to do. Massive earthquake. Fire devouring. Got a little excited there. Where are we? Uh, shall let go of the captives, not for price nor reward. He's not going to do it for, for money. He's going to do it because God told him to do it. Don't tell me Cyrus is not going to be in heaven. Sayeth the Lord of hosts. 55 verses 1 to 3, Acts 13, 26 to 34. Thus saith the Lord, this, is, this labor of Egypt, the merchandise of Ethiopian is Sabines, Sabines, how you going to say, men of stature, they're tall, basketball players, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. Talking to Cyrus, they shall come after thee in chains, slavery. They shall come over to thee, and they shall fall down unto thee. And they shall make supplication unto thee. Now here's the testimony of Cyrus. Saying, surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself. O God of Israel. Uh oh. The Savior. The Egyptians, the Ethiopians, and the Sabaeans tell the Jehovah Witnesses you're a bunch of liars. The testimony of Cyrus brings these people and says, Hey, we come to you. We're your slaves. And we acknowledge that there's no God but the God of Israel. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They shall go to comfort together that are makers of idols. Oh, we learn about the idols. All these nations had idols. They had foreign gods. Just the Egypt. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation except for when people who want to steal their, their claim and their rights and their blessings and God's all finished with them. If God is all finished with them, then Isaiah 45, Isaiah 44, 
are a violation and God's a liar and God cannot be a liar. Nor can he lie. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Now these people are ashamed and confounded because they're idolatry. So God must be going to get rid of their idolatry. And he will get rid of it. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. That keeps coming up over and over. I made the heavens. Stop worshiping them. I made the trees. Stop making idols. I am the creator. You're just the createe. See, when you make a God, you become God. Problem is, you're a sinner. So the God that you made was made in a sinner's hand. And yet we are sinners, but God made us holy and God made us pure. And God is holy, who is sinless. We sin, not God. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. He didn't want us to be like this today. He never wanted man to go to hell because Jesus said hell was made for Satan and his angel, not man. But man goes to hell today, you say. You're preaching the street, you're going to hell. Because man disobeyed what God told him not to do. So, men going to hell, verse 7, is evil in the eyes of God. It is evil for a man to go to hell, according to the scripture. I formed it to be inhabited. Really? Two naked people with no sin, no pain, no sorrow, and their command is go and multiply and reproduce, replenish the earth. Now, can you imagine without painless childbirth, without pain, hospitalization, all that? Can you imagine how many children there would be? I guess God would have to have other planets to put them on. See, the Mormons are wrong. They got it backwards. Had we done everything right, the planets would have been for us to populate in righteousness and holiness. But they say, you know, spirits from other planets come here and you have your spiritual baby and all that other junk. I am the Lord and there is none else. You get what God's telling Israel? I'm the only one. Uh, Joshua. He says, Behold, my, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And what was the what was the topic there? What was the whole you guys have got gods. Now you got them around your neck, you got them on your rings, you got them right in all your body. You, you, you got your, your prayer blanket. You got everything. You got to forsake those things. And they, yeah, we will forsake them, but they never got rid of them. Jacob records. He says, "Listen, give me all those idols that, that Rachel started. Give them to me. All right, dig a hole in that that oak. All right, give them to me. Bury them." Aiken, you got a God there? Come on, bring it out. And yet when Joshua, Israel, yeah, we'll follow God, but they never got rid of him. You know what's going to happen just as Jesus Christ comes back? Man is going to take his idols, they're still there, in seven years of tribulation. The Bible says they're going to cast them to the moles, to the rats, to the bats. They're going to cast them into the, the holes of the caves. Because they don't want to be caught with them because here comes the God that we're reading about. Man don't want to be caught red-handed with idols. I have not spoken in secret. No, it's right here in black and white. In a dark place of the earth. Guru. You know, you got to climb this big mountain. And here's this. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. I guess dark places are, but I guess, you, you know, if you were to go over some caves over in the Middle East, Cumbria and something like that, uh, I guess that would be a dark place to prove that those are really not. Seek ye me in vain. I, 
the Lord speaketh righteousness. I declare things that are right. Romans 10, 6, John 18, 19. He didn't tell Jacob, you know, just to seek me, just to seek me, to seek me. That's what it means, seek in vain. I am God, and I am righteous, and I do right. Everything else is wrong. Religion, and idolatry, and imagery, and all that stuff is of Satan, John 8, 44. Satan has all kinds of religious costumes in his closet. Even some non-religious. Because even atheism and agnostic are religion. You have something you got faith in. You got faith in there's no God. That's faith. That's religion. Science has faith that from nothing here we are. That's faith. That's a religion. Assemble yourselves and come, Isaiah 118. Draw near together, Isaiah 118. Ye that are escaped of the nations. Ye come out, they've been all over. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image. Here we go again from chapter 44. Uh, 44. No knowledge. And pray unto a small G-O-D that cannot save. How do you like that? Read that to somebody who has a graven image. It's called a small G-O-D and it cannot save you. Imagine a man standing up at the great white throne judgment standing before God. What is your plea? I got Oonga Bonga. Where my Oonga Bonga? Burning in hell, you Oonga Bonga. You're supposed to have Jesus. No, 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 Jesus. Oonga Bonga. You know, many times a missionary would, would go in these places here. <coughs> <coughs> They get saved, but they have a hard time getting rid of their God. And they would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we believe resurrection of Jesus Christ, but my unga bunga. And the missionary would say, can I have unga bunga? You, you take unga bunga. He good God. He good God. And he good God. What are you doing shovel? I'm going to build it. I'm going to bury a hole. I'm going to put Oonga Boonga in the dirt and bury him, okay? Okay. When you going to take Oonga Boonga out? Three days and three nights. Okay. Three days and three nights and three days later, missionary knocks on the guy and goes, let's go get Oonga Boonga. Now remember, the gospel is that you believe that Jesus Christ died for our sin, was buried. Oonga Boonga is buried. On the third day, he arose again according to the scriptures. You believe that? Yes, I do. All right, let's go see if we can find Oonga Boonga. Goes over the hole, digs it up. There's Oonga Boonga. That nigga looks at Oonga Boonga. Looks at Jesus and says, Oonga Boonga dead died. He didn't come up. See, when you bury your, your, your gods... And you go back to dig them up. Another guy said, uh, you know, I, I'm taking my television set. I'm going to bury it in the backyard. That's it. I've had it with it. No more television. I'm going to bury it in the backyard. I'm going to put a flag right where I buried it. Because when he goes back to dig it back up to watch his, his filthy television show, he's going to know it's still there in the ground. But the world buried Jesus, and they came back, and he was gone. When Mary and those women came to the, to the sepulcher, they did not expect to find Jesus gone. Why did they bring the spices? Why did they bring the bandages? They were looking for a dead body. And guess what? If they were looking for Oonga Boonga, they would been there. They would have to dress Oonga Boonga. Somewhere in the world there's a god named Oonga Boonga. I guarantee it. I don't know where I got that. But when they came to Jesus, the angels said, He is not here. He is risen. So take your idols and go bury it in your backyard and give it three days and three nights and let's see if it's there without someone stealing it. Put a watch on it. Maybe I'll do it with a time man. <laughs>
They better watch. I ain't even watching story. Uh, where was that? Hmm. Verse 21. Tell ye and bring them. My vision going near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this? I apologize. My eyes are getting blurry. Who has this form? Who has declared this from ancient times? Who has told it from the from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else besides me. Over and over, a just God. We had righteous God. Now we just God and a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is none beside me. He pictured God in heaven. He's on his throne. He's right into Isaiah. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Lord. Hi, Michael. Hi, Lord. Angels. Sheriff. Sheriff. Ah, he's gone. <laughs> I cast him down. I don't see anybody else over here that's God. Nowhere. Michael, any God over there? No, no God over there. Gabriel, any God over there? No God over there. First number beast, any God over there? No God over there. Number two beast, any God? No. We looked all around heaven. We don't see anybody else up here. Job 1 and 2 says Satan came up with the holes, and that's a small G-O-D. Didn't we just read about a small G-O-D? Uh-oh. Look unto me. God is pleading. And be ye saved. Look and live. That is the, back to when they would look at the serpent. I am the salvation, he just said. Beside me there is no Savior. All the ends of the earth. For I am God. And Gabriel, no God over here. Michael, no God over here. And there is none else. I have sworn by myself. When God swears by me, you know, we say, Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. We swear that in a King James, well, we should swear in the King James Bible. All kinds of things men swear when God swears for the greater. He says, "Me." Who do you? And you imagine someone. You imagine God stepping in the courtroom. Who do you swear by? Me. <laughs> well, who do you just think you are, God? Okay. I have sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That. Unto me every knee shall bow. Oh, that's where Paul got it. And every tongue shall swear. That Jesus Christ. Is the Savior. Surely. Shall one say. In the Lord. Have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. And all that are incest against yeah, let's see. And all that are priests and incest, I apologize again, my eyes are cloudy. Against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified. Oh, there we go. And shall glory. So one time, one day coming, Israel will be in their glory. Not now. And all the idolatry and all the small GODSs will be gone. And there will be nothing but God and the Lord Jesus Christ. For all eternity. It is God 
the Lord Jesus Christ that sits among New Jerusalem. There is no Mary. There is no Buddha. There is no Allah. No Zeus. No Hercules. No Asterisk. No Easter bunnies. No Christmas trees. No Santa Claus. No Oonga Boonga. Let's get him back in there. Just God. And when we are in glory for all eternity, those gods will never even be a thought or even spoken on the tip of our tongues ever again. You know how much God hates idolatry and the worship of false gods? When we are in eternity, he gets rid of it totally. It's all gone. 